Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. First of all, I would like to thank our instructor, Dr. Juvenir Y. Lactam, for giving me the opportunity to be a resource speaker in this course. My name is Noreen C. Delgado, and my topic for today is all about unleashing the power of your resources. How to get the most out of your school's assets. Topic number one, overview of the different types of school resources, including traditional and non-traditional resources. And our topic two, strategies for identifying and leveraging underutilized resources. First, we shall have our overview of the different types of school resources, including traditional and non-traditional resources. Traditional resource materials are reading materials which are written or printed. Examples of such are magazines, newspapers, journals, books, diaries, encyclopedias, and other written or printed documents. While non-traditional resources are more recent information platforms like social media. Traditional classrooms are traditional classroom teaching focuses on a number of elements including lecture, case studies, team projects, and so forth. Learning is conducted in a synchronous environment, meaning that the students must be in the same place at the same time in order to learn. Non-traditional teaching is a broad category that includes many different types of methods and technologies. Those were once considered impossible to teach using in-class methods. We have also flipped classrooms. One method that may many teachers find helpful is flipped classrooms. In flipped classrooms, the teacher in the classroom has the responsibility for both the left and right sides of the classroom at all times. This arrangement provides greater flexibility for the teacher by allowing them to keep their attention and become a better teacher. They are not confined to a specific side of the room at any given time. The best part about flipped classrooms is that students may end up engaging with one teacher. Inclusive learning environment. Another key strategy used by many teachers is an inclusive learning environment. An inclusive learning environment is one where all students can be included. Additionally, students learn in a way where the lesson take them out of their comfort zone. For example, in an inclusive learning environment, students will typically be grouped based on age, grade level, and subject matter content. An inclusive learning environment makes it easier for students to interact with others, making it a great place for students to learn. Engage learning environment. Engage learning environment, a teacher can also use non-traditional learning methods in an effort to create an engaged learning environment for their students. We have also pre-lecture presentation. A pre-lecture presentation is often used in classes where students are learning a new subject. A pre-lecture lecture generally takes the form of an overview of the entire class assignment or lesson. 
with a brief overview of the key points of the material covered throughout the semester. Pre-lectures are often used in preparation for longer-term assignments. Traditional resources. Using Blackboard can be helpful to you and your students. Blackboard is a course management system that allows you to provide content to students in a central location, communicate with students quickly, and provide grades in an electronic format to students. We have also traditional resources. Example is the main advantage of using real objects into the classroom is to make the learning experience more memorable for the learner. We have also an example of traditional resources, a wall chart. It's a type of large poster often displaying information for education and entertainment. We have also a textbook for, or course book is a manual of instruction in any branch of study. Textbooks are produced according to the demands of educational institutions. Although, most textbooks are only published in printed format. As you visit classrooms, you will observe or you can notice that most, if not all, of those classrooms use a standard textbook series. The reasons for this are many, depending on the design and focus of the curriculum. The mandates of the administration and or the level of expertise on the part of classroom teachers. Textbooks provide you with several advantages in the classroom. Our second topic is all about strategies for identifying and leveraging underutilized resources. But before that, let us answer this question. What is resource utilization and why is it important? Resource utilization is a way to measure how effectively resources are used against their availability or capacity. It shows how productive your workforce is and also identifies where they are being over or underutilized. In short, resource utilization measures the percentage of time spent by resources on billable or strategic work. Underutilization is often caused due to skill gaps, lack of diligence from the manager's end, and an absence of appropriate tools. Furthermore, ineffective tracking of utilization levels often result, results in some team members being underutilized affecting the bottom line. There are effective ways to combat resource under underutilization. We have maintain enterprise-wide visibility of resource-related attributes, periodically mobilize resources from non-billable to billable work. Third is implement a shared services model to distribute work uniformly and the last is track and minimize bench time to maximize utilization so this maintain enterprise wide visibility of resource related attributes so maintaining 360 degree visibility of resource related attributes including cost rate, skills, competency, 
etc. can help determine the, the right resources for each task and ensure competent allocation. It can also help keep track of the projects a resource is currently working on their future engagement. And number two is periodically mobilize resources from non billable to billable work. Periodic rotation of resources among different types of jobs not only helps diversity their portfolio but also helps in achieving optimal utilization levels. For example, allocating a senior resource to a non-critical job will not only escalate cost but also demoralize them as their skills are not optimally utilized. Instead, mobilizing the resor that resource to some variable or strategic work can enhance productivity and keep employee morale high. Next is implement a shared services model to distribute work uniformly. Implementing a shared services model can help overcome the underutilization of several resources across departments. Using this model, the manager, manager can identify the resources in each department whose utilization levels are below their capacities. Following that, they can identify the vacant position across different departments. And the last one is track and minimize bench time to maximize utilization. A lack of foresight and coordination between project and resource manager during ramp down activities increases bench size. However, by leveraging forecasting capabilities of a resource management tool, managers can effectively, effectively reduce the bench time of resources. And we have provide training, upskilling to resources at the appropriate time. There are also top 12 resource management best practices. Number one is understand which resources are in short supply and focus on them. Number two, agree on a common approach to prioritizing work across shared resources. So you should create an agreed upon scoring evaluation process in advance to help facilitate objective decision making rather than fall victim to the squeaky wheel problem. Monitor and plan work that can steal from your capacity and create hidden delays. Keep in mind that overcommitting people can lead to quality problems and a reduction in, in overall through output. Throughput. Number three is embrace different ways of working across the organization and resources. Different types of work and even different groups within your organization may benefit from a specific methodology. And such ensure that the tools and selected approaches align and create efficiencies. At higher levels, a more standard, standardized roll-up can provide the metrics need needed for a comprehensive view of your organization. This will enable your organization to plan, manage, and deliver work, utilizing a range of methodologies such as traditional or milestone-driven, interactive, agile, and even collaborative work. Realize resource management is an ongoing process. Recognize that conflicts will occur because unexpect unexpected events and changes are inevitable. Work together to resolve resource conflicts based on your immediate and downstream priorities. Manage work and resources uses a blend of 
granularities. Planning work, managing assignments, and reporting time doesn't all have to utilize the same granularity. Find the balance that works for each situation. Planning work is often the most granular, while time reporting may be elevated to simplify the reporting process of those tracking time, which leads to a greater level of accuracy. When assigning resources to work, long-term assignments often work best at the high levels, while near-term assignments tend to be well understood, allowing for more detailed planning. Plan work. Consider traditional tasks with start or finish dates and durations for formally defined work and less formal lists to handle lightweight assignments. Align projects and other work to the strategic outcomes they are meant to support. Utilize automated processes where possible to reduce administration. You have number seven, manage resource assignments. Use high-level buckets at the project or pace level as a starting point if resource management is new to your organization. Remember that one size doesn't fit all and varies usage based on specific constraint resources or groups. For example, DBAs may be shared and Overutilize, so may you want to increase the level of detail to minimize conflicts. Ensure that your resource management usage decision can evolve as needs and challenges have over time. Number eight, report time. Remember that different groups may be more reluctant to time reporting, so keep things simple and easy. Further is Adaption by tracking time in the execution tool of your resources choice. Utilize actuals to assess performance and understand trends to improve future planning. Apply assignment types that align to your business needs. Utilize a name, role base, resources for long-term planning or when the specific resource isn't known in advance. Soft booking of name resources and benefit medium term. Planning and prioritization processes. Hard book name resources for the short term when detailed information is known. We have number 10, account for non-project time. Ensure that administrative time, paid time of etc. are accounted for when planning in both the long and short terms. Don't forget about unexpected project activities. Be sure to provide a mechanism to capture this time. Otherwise, you will lose visibility to this reduction of capacity. Realize there will be a natural time loss from common everyday items such as administrative tasks. Number 11 is Avoid or limit multitasking. Multitasking sounds efficient but often results in lower overall productivity. Try to limit the number of parallel tasks and your resources will perform better. How to leverage your strengths in the workplace. Companies need employees with different skill sets to better their organizations. The strengths you bring to the workplace are an advantage for both you and your employer. Once you learn to leverage those skills, you can set professional goals and find the best role to complement the strengths you bring to the workplace. In this article, we explain how to leverage your strengths and why it is important to your career. Why is it important to leverage your strengths in the workplace? It's important to leverage your strengths in the workplace so you can thrive in your role. Once you know your best skills, you can use them to your advantage to perform better on daily tasks. Set goals to advance in your position within your company or in another job. 
and become more satisfied with your career. Leveraging your strength does the following for you, for you in the workplace. Helps you find the best role, increases your productivity, sets you up for leadership, allows you to grow. So we have 10 key strengths to develop for career advancement. Examples of strengths to leverage at work, we have the soft skills, time management, communication, critical thinking, leadership, attention to detail, creativity, problem solving, teamwork, adaptability, and organization. We have also some examples of skills you can learn based on training and life experience. We have the hard skills, public speaking, writing, coding, website development, graphic design, instruction, programming, operating machines, operating software, skilled trade work, carpentry and plumbing, sales, mathematics, engineering, drafting, and languages. Before I will end my topic, I will leave you a quote. The most important attitude that can be formed is that of desire to go on learning by John Dewey. Thank you so much for your time and thank you for listening. God bless us all.